oversee the construction phase of both building projects? I think right there we'll just say right. the project because yeah. we've defined yeah. the project, the project. Right. as being either or above. So strike of both buildings. Yeah, it should be of the building. Of the project. Of oh, the project, right, of the project. Uh, and then uh, work with school and town and school department officials to oversee financial aspect of the project. Complete other tasks as required by the project. Excellently ambiguous. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> right there. Oh, yeah, that's something that really okay. got to be. Mr. Bowers. It's got to be. Okay. Are we so, missing anything? I was going to say, are we missing anything here? Well, you know what? We will vote on the charge tonight. We'll let the, the legal eyes review it as well. Yeah. Um, we'll get it all typed up nice and new, Cliff, and we'll, at our next meeting, we'll vote on the charge. You won't. Yeah. <laughs> When you, give when you get the okay from the MSBA on that number three, mm -hmm. you will also know what you're going to get for a percentage. Right. All right? And that's how you're going to present right. to, the to the town. That's what you'll know like whether that. you have 50%, 60%. Uh, this is going to, we're pushing for a model school, which the state does not have out there. It's very possible that we could rate very high on this if we could put the numbers together. And that's a really good point, Jeff, because uh, for um, the people in the town, when they get a chance to vote on this, it'll be a different process than in the past. Right. We will know when we vote on the school how much money we're getting from the state. Um, in the past, we voted and then we submitted to the state to see if we were going to get reimbursement. And the um, carrot to that is what you get. You get the money back as soon as the project starts. Right. They funnel that money back. Yeah. Right. They don't pay any it's not a lump payment at the end like they like they used to do. You don't know beforehand when it's going to present this. Right. So you know when you're thinking about it over the next few days, if there's something else we should change or add, let us know because we won't vote on it tonight. There's one piece, and I'm not sure if it has to be in a formal charge, but it's the marketing of this project. Um, you know, I chaired the building committee for four years, and we had specific individuals on our committee who had a salesmanship, who had an ability to just, um, and that was a single role, to do the PowerPoint presentation at town meeting, um, to be that person who can answer questions and sell the project. Um, and I'm wondering if you'd give thought to asking somebody like um, Mr. Tower, who sold everybody on the, the turf field, um, or somebody with that aspect, which the state hasn't required, but this is going to be on the fast track, and it's in, you know, an economically difficult time for people. So we really need someone who can explain to the town why we need these buildings because from the outside they look fine. Um, you know, we constantly talk about the need to improve educational space so we can bring in science programs and, you know, better computer labs. But people hear it from us all the time. So we need another face. We need somebody that has that ability to present it to the people in such a way that they're just hanging on every word and can't wait to see that building done. Well, and I think it has to be, um, I, I've worked up some marketing ideas for this, and it has to be more than just a town meeting. There have to be um, community forums, at least probably a couple of those. We should do a cable TV program um, where we present, you know, show the issues at the schools, why, why we need new, a new high school, middle school facility. There should be um, probably a question and answer uh, feature that we'd ask the transcript to run that has all the questions we think will come up and what the answers are. Um, website. website, our own website. You, I, I don't know. I don't know what, but maybe we have a just a, an SSBC website that, you know, nothing fancy, but just lists all all the ideas and all the issues related to why we need a new school. Yeah. And then from our point of view, from our from, from our side, we need to. And we started talking about this a couple of a, pro, a couple of meetings ago, where I think it was somewhere between six and eight million dollars worth of. Um, Call them enhancements, renovations that are needed at these schools today. Crisis, 
twice as renovations. Right, from roofs to septic systems to science labs to, yeah, it was so a lot of money. Yeah, the capital investment of tax dollars that will go to waste if we don't buy new. We're going to end up fixing all the stuff and, on and, top of the education. And I think it's important to point out, you know, we have a choice here. Do we go for, a, for new schools or do we go to the MSBA for patchwork upgrades that really don't bias anything on the education front, which, you know, while we need a new septic system, that's not going to improve uh, the education of our kids. Or a new roof isn't going to improve the education of our kids. Or removing asbestos, you know, isn't going to improve the education. And, and most of the, most of the um, expenses that we looked at for uh, cap, large cap didn't apply to educational space, right. didn't apply to educational, the educational programs. It's a facility, you were doing a facility yeah. repair. Right. You, were doing. Right. you know, when we um, first brought the bachelor school forward, we had pictures of kids in school, which in the small batch classes really left an impact. We did tours of the facility, um, and we had folks that didn't have school-aged children that hadn't been in the building in years come in and walk through it. Um, you know, it, it was like those kind of ideas that really sold the community on the three-part elementary project. We, we bought in to the three schools, not one by one, but as a whole, and that was a lot of trust. But we people were able to buy into it for different reasons because it was packaged and wrapped and sold by you know individuals that knew how to do that that maybe weren't the architects or engineers or town officials, you know, so I think that's a big component that we're missing. I don't know if any of you um, have ideas or if you feel that a subgroup within your group could oversee the marketing piece. So we would ask you, the existing committee to really think about that um, and how you did the your side. Is that part of the reimbursable? No, that would be. What I will say to you is if the town does not buy into this, there were 300 and some odd other schools that are buying for this money. If the town passes over it, it'll be a long time before the town will ever be eligible for money. Right. Right. I can, if you look at the list of the schools, that are involved in applying for this. We happen to get in. I think a lot of it had to do with Brad Jones and Bruce Todd to get us in there. And Tim K. Hill told us three years ago that it's got a little political motivation to it also. All right. But that's the big thing. We will, if you pass it over, it'll be a long time before North Reading. political pressure and David's pressure was placed on there, I think they let us in under that pilot program. And we need to come up with that core facility, um, a campus kind of idea, so that the state can use this as it goes around finding solutions for other communities. Um, it's our one shot and it's just, we're fortunate we got that one shot. And I know we can put out the facts and people will say, yes, you know, money better spent if it's new. But you still need to have that marketing. You still need to package it pretty for people to actually open their wallets and get excited about the project and see the value that it will bring us in the end. Um, the school children, of course, but taxpayers definitely. Um, you get them as excited as they did for the football field. That's what we need to tap into. <laughs> One big difference, though, Chuck. You know what it is. Yeah, Sports. No, ta right. no, no taxpayer no money for the, yeah. for, the, for the turf yeah. field. Yeah. You had people right. they, right. that were revved up for it. We had the right person. You had a motivated group yes. that wanted to get it done, right. and they found a way to get it done. Right. Yes. Correct. But 
another way to get done, get this done is, you know, we can do all the marketing in the world, but we need to get our people to show up at the meeting and vote for it. Right. And so I think a good chunk of this is just old-fashioned get out the vote. Get to the meeting, be part of this, and be part of your community and making decisions. And yeah. we have to sell that. There's less trouble, I think, in getting people to show up at town meeting for it. Right. I think town meeting is the easy part. Right. Yeah. It's it's the ballot part. Right. The ballot, ballot. The, right. the ballot yeah. question for the overall. And I think if we you know we've talked about marketing. I think it's more than a marketing effort. It's a um, a public education of the need, and that's not the, quite the same as marketing. And you know we don't need a lot of hoopla. We just need to get it to everybody. And when we get the message to everybody, and if the message is coherent, I believe that the voters will go for it. But you need to get that coherent message that we really need it. It isn't something that is optional at this point. Well, I know, and I think one, one thing that's important to point out is, is one of the difficulties I, difficulties I have is, um, Maureen talked about when they toured the, the old batch, and people toured that school, and they were like, this is, this is a disgrace. However, if you tour these two schools, our maintenance staff and Wayne have done such a great job with these schools. Even Catherine Craven, when she toured the high school, she said, this high school is in amazing condition. She also was pretty vocal recognizing that, that there are a lot of major issues at our high school. But she was shocked at the condition of the high school. And it's almost like, geez, we should have followed the, the, uh, the lead of the other town that just let their schools go to hell. Because then you go in there and you say, our kids can't go to school here. This is terrible. The first year that we were getting together, we worked on the educational program that you guys approved. Mm -hmm. And I think there should be possibly more emphasis on not that we're, not only are we replacing a school that's falling down, but we're trying to meet educational needs. Because right. I, I don't think that's being stressed. That's getting to what um, right. Cliff specs, was saying. Specs, that the exactly. specs that yeah. we're far, far, falling far short of. Right. And if we're trying to put our children in, a uh, reasonable position before they go to school. That's what we're really trying right. to, yeah. to get. And I think we're losing sight of that a little bit. No, you're I right. Like the high school, at the high school, the science labs, the small classrooms that, that are the much smaller than... Equipment. Right. And I think yeah. maybe that should be in, in part yeah. of our charge. Yeah, it has to. Is, yeah. is meeting the um, educational needs, not just the, the building needs. We'll do all we can at every meeting. It'll be on the agenda. And we'll devise a way, make, break it down. And we'll do what we can, but again, people expect us to be in support of it. So we need, you know, we need a group within the group maybe to be the marketing. Um, and you know, hold forums at different times of the day, you know, in the morning when moms drop their kids off and they want to go to an informational session, held at different elementary schools and then maybe the middle schools. Uh, you know, think about getting the dads involved and what time of night they would come down to a session and just really hitting every segment of our population um, because we you know we really once this goes you know starts hitting the ground and we're, we're probably looking at 18 months before it comes before a vote oh i think it's going to be a lot less if, if we if if well, doc uh, was saying that if we get the paperwork in by mid-March, correct, with everything including the new committee yep. members, everything gets approved by SBA, then we move forward with the feasibility study. That's not going to take that long, yeah, right? we want to try and slow that down to but we I don't get think a new we can. Right, I don't think we can. Once it gets in, yeah, right? I, I, don't, I don't know how long the feasibility study will take. But yeah, but once... We, we want to put this thing pedal to the metal. We want to go as fast as we can go because this decline we have current in the current market is not going to last forever. Right, we'll get good rates. Yeah. We, yeah. we should be prices. working hard to get in. Well, and other towns, are, over. other towns are pushing for the same money, too, and that's, you know, that's the problem. The, the state money is one, one issue. That will, if we do our work right, that will come right along. Right. The problem is that we need to get it to construction. Correct. That's that's the goal. Get it under construction while we still have a, a, a recession going on, or a di diminished environmental uh, economic situation. That's what we want to try to get to, and, and we, we probably should have been pushing harder earlier, but we didn't have any okay from the state school right. building right. people. So, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, I think the the hardest part is that uh, 
although we would like to believe that everybody in town is watching this meeting, they're not. And they don't have, they don't read all